Hey guys, and welcome back to another how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at how to adjust uh, placeable mods that give you income, um, how to adjust uh, factory scripts uh, to have uh, more realistic outputs or have more realistic prices, uh, or basically fit your style of gameplay, if that be adjusting the prices up, down, sideways, left, or right, or diagonal. Uh, however you want to go, uh, we're going to show you pretty much how to adjust uh, various things that uh, give you additional income to best suit your gameplay. So here we have the uh, placeable fruit trees. Uh, this is the apple tree. And as you see, I've got manure and water here. Uh, got them filled up with uh, full each. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let it run. We're going to speed up the clock here. So before we do that, actually, let's look at our prices screen. And this particular mod gives us income in the property income um, entry. So you can see right now we have zero income. We're going to go ahead and speed up time until around 9 o'clock uh, and see where we sit. Actually, we'll go exactly to 9 o'clock. Uh, this particular mod gives you three different levels of income based on difficulty level. Uh, this particular uh, save game, which is my test save game, is set on hard difficulty level. So we should see about $20 in our property income after an hour. Let's uh, stop this here. Let's back it down. And let's check our prices. And where are we at? Property income. And we have $80. What the heck is up with that? $80. Um, and we just went just over an hour. So how on earth do we have $80 of income uh, from this one little tree? So let's go ahead and also let's check here. We've used 4% of each of our fill types. So let's save this game. And let's uh, exit out. And uh, we'll go over to Notepad++. All right, guys, so here we are in uh, Notepad++, and we've got our apple tree.xml file open from our apple tree, um, from our fruit tree uh, mod. We also have the apple tree.i3d. Uh, now, there really isn't much to look at here under the i3d, so we're really not going to mess with that one. We're just going to talk about the XML file here. So we have in here our XML, and this is under the store data. This relates to purchasing and basically just the listing of the, uh, of the item. Uh, of note, we may want to adjust the price. We may decide that, well, for the amount of income that we're getting, $5,000 is awful low. We may want to bump this up to $10,000. Or we may decide that $5,000 is awful high, and we may want to adjust it to $1,000. So we'll just do that. We'll just put it in $1,000. We'll make the daily upkeep one just for funsies. And let's go down here to the greenhouses. So here we are, the income per hour. So this should be the income per hour for easy, $60 an hour. Income per hour for me, or normal, 40 And the income per hour for hard, which is 20 Now, why did we see... $80 of income after just over one hour. I don't really know. That's, that's, maybe the mod is coded wrong. Um, but, well, obviously that is way too much because if we're getting $80 an hour, we're going to be getting way too much money per game day out of these things. So we may decide, well, let's go in here and let's drop this by a factor of 10. Now the tree is only going to pay us $2 per hour. $4 per hour or $6 per hour. But realistically, we're probably going to more see like $8 per hour. Down here, we have our water tank capacity of 500. So this is saying that the tree will hold 500 liters of water. Uh, it has a usage per hour of 10 liters. Okay. And our manure has a capacity of 1,000 liters and has a usage at rate of 20 per hour. So while... The manure is twice as more volume as water. It's used up twice as fast. Uh, now we may decide that um, based on our gameplay, we want to um, we want this to take up more or less water and manure. So we can go in here and we can adjust this value. Uh, we may decide that, well, if we're getting 
one if we're cutting the income by a tenth let's cut the usage by a tenth so we can uh we really don't have to babysit these things very often so we're going to change this to one and two for example so let's go ahead and save that and let's jump in the game and see how the mod now behaves okay so we're back in game and uh, we've got our tree again it is 902 a.m you see we're at 480 and 960 uh, liters let's go ahead and fast forward or let's check our money again it should be at 80. not really sure why but it's at 80. let's go ahead and fast forward our time to uh, 10 o'clock and see where we are not only with our our money but with our manure and water usage So one idea for this would be if uh, if you wanted these things to produce, let's say you were playing Seasons and you didn't want to uh, have to run up here every single game day or basically every you know hour or two in order to uh, to feed these things um, day or two, then uh, you could do that. So you can see here we have 479 and 958. Uh, liters so we have basically dropped one liter of each or one liter of water and two liters of manure in that hour uh, so these will now last in theory 500 uh, game hours before they'll run out of water and manure so uh, you won't have to babysit them near as often and let's take a look and our income is now four dollars so we went from eighty dollars to just four dollars Let's go ahead and speed up another hour. I must have gotten a double income there uh, when I put that one down. Uh, so that's why it was showing $80. And uh, what we're doing is, is that makes more sense now. So if we put water in, we would get $20 an hour. If we put manure and water in, then we basically get double that rate at $40 an hour. Or for easy, $100 and twenty dollars per hour because the base rate was sixty so we can see now that we have eighty eight dollars let it tick up one more time and uh, we will get another um, two dollars so we'll get up to ninety two dollars so this is just a way that you can um, tweak something like these fruit trees uh, you might want to play with the fruit trees uh, but you don't want the massive amount of income that they seem to generate just want them to trickle a little bit of money into uh, into your account uh, for the uh, for the fun. See that our usage is going down ever so slowly, and our income is cranking up ever so slowly. Also, so that's the uh, placeable fruit trees. Um, obviously, that change works for those. Let me uh, exit, and uh, we'll just uh, basically let's just save this, and we'll exit the game. And I'll show you the uh, the XML again with respect to another uh, placeable uh, mod that gives you some money, and that is the billboard mod. So the billboard mod is in the in-game mod hub again, and you can see it basically has the same income per hour, one, two, and three, uh, but it doesn't have the other variables because it doesn't use anything. It just, you plop it down and you get this much money per hour. So again, you may decide, wow, $500 an hour, and this thing costs me $100,000. So that is, uh, what, many hours? So two hours is $1,000. So it's like 200 game hours uh, will be, um, will pay for this thing back. So less than 10 game days, I guess. It's kind of really shoot by your hip math. But less than 10 game days or around 10 game days and uh, you have paid back for your billboard if you're playing with seasons then the likelihood is you're going to have far more than 10 game days uh, you'll probably have you know 40 or 50 game days and in that case you're going to make some serious cash uh, just from using this billboard so you may decide that uh, well I don't need that much money you can go in here and you can drop this to say a hundred dollars uh, per hour or you could adjust this up if you decide that uh, well you want more money I want $800 per hour 
for hard difficulty. Just save it out, and there you go. So when we come back, we're going to look at a different uh, different deal, adjusting a factory uh, with respect to its output. Uh, maybe you're playing with seasons and it outputs too quickly, uh, as well as adjusting the amount of money that you earn uh, for its finished product. Because maybe the factory pays out a little bit too well, or maybe it doesn't pay out well enough. All right, guys, so here we are back in game, and now I've got a uh, placeable mod. This is a uh, bakery uh, placeable uh, that I got, and uh, we also have the sell point over here. And uh, I want to show you basically, let's say you want to slow down the production of this particular thing. So um, I was really into uh, production uh, mods uh, before Seasons came out. But when Seasons came out, I kind of got away from production mods because these things produced so darn quick uh, for the way I was playing Seasons. You know, I like to play Seasons with a faster clock. If you've seen any of my gameplays, you'll see that I played anywhere from 5 times to 15 times speed. And I can tell you, running at 15 times speed, uh, you feel like you need to babysit these placeables uh, because you need to empty them like every 10 game minutes. Or, or every 10 real life minutes. Uh, and that's just a little bit too ridiculous. So we've got a uh, bakery placeable here. This is just stock. I've made no changes to this whatsoever. See, we've got uh, all of our products running here. And we started producing a pallet around 12.09. So let's go ahead and speed up the clock here until we get to 109. And this particular placeable is configured to produce 4,000 liters or 4,000 units of output per game hour. Um, and that is basically the equivalent of one pallet per hour of production. So if we were running at um, 10 times speed, we would basically have one pallet every 10 real life minutes or every six minutes. I'm sorry. So if we were playing 10x speed, there we are. We're at 110, and uh, we have 4,000 liters. Let's move this out here out of the way. Got the game extension mod on so that we can just uh, move things out of the way. Let's bump time up again. And we'll see that this uh, factory started producing at 113 um, or so, right? So we'll just let it run until 213-ish. And um, then we'll shut it off because it will basically fill back up again. It will be at uh, at uh, 4,000 liters. Pay a little bit of attention here. Got some rain coming in. Let's back it down a little bit. The output here. And here we are at 4,000 liters. And it's 216. So right about 4,000 liters per hour. Put that over there. And uh, let's also talk about this uh, sell point. So if we look at our prices screen. Okay, so here's the sell point. Scroll over here. See that our bread is right now selling at 2,000, just almost $2,000. Now this will go up and down. This will fluctuate uh, just like all the other prices do. But to think, you could earn $2,000 a game hour. You could earn $2,000 every 6 minutes if you played at 10 times speed. Or every 12 minutes if you played at 5 times speed. Or you could earn, if you played even at 1 times speed and you just kept feeding this thing, you would have um, 24 pallets over the course of one day. Uh, and you could make a fortune if you could keep this thing fed. So, let's uh, jump out of the game. We're going to go ahead and save this, just for funsies. We're going to go ahead and jump out of the game, make a couple adjustments, and come on right back in. Alright, so here we are, back at Notepad++. And we've got um, four files open. We have the Bakery XML, Bakery i3D, the Bakery Cellpoint i3D, and the Bakery Cellpoint XML. So, just like the... Um, Fruit tree mod, sorry about that, blanked out a little bit. Uh, the XML file really doesn't have a lot of information that we're going to be playing with. 
can, of course, tweak the price if we wanted to, tweak the upkeep um, if we wanted to, uh, but really there's no need to do that. So we're not going to worry with that file. We're going to look at the Bakery i3D. And very specifically, what we're going to look for is this variable called product, product per hour. Okay, so this is the amount of product that this placeable will produce every game hour. Right now it is set to 4,000. So we can decide that we wanted to, let's say we want to make this um, produce significantly less. We want this to make a 4,000 liter pallet every game day. Once a game day, we want a pallet. That's all we want. So let's pull up our calculator and let's take 4,000 and divide it by 24, and we get one, 166 and two-thirds. So just for rounding sakes, let's say 167. Okay, so we'll get one pallet, 167. That's all we're going to do. So we'll do 167 liters of product per game hour, which should equate out to about um, one pallet for an entire game day. Okay. Uh, other things in here that we could adjust, should we so wish. Go in here and we could change the name. Uh, something that makes a little bit more sense to us. Let's call it a bakery. Okay. Well, actually, we don't want to do that because that will break the script. Sorry. Need to leave that as it is. Um, here we have a user attribute. This some, and some of the following user attributes are going to relate to the inputs. So the barley fill type, which is the Gerst, um, forty thousand. Should say that this could hold more or less of that. And factor is basically how much of that is going to be used. Um, over the game hour. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Uh, sunflowers, 40,000. We have water, 40,000. have then pallets, 20,000. And wheat. And basically bread. Not really sure what that is, because that is not that is what it makes, right? I haven't used this particular mod um, at all, actually. I just so happened to have it in my uh, inventory, so I pulled it up because I wanted to show you a fabric script uh, production mod. So as you remember, we only changed product per hour to a level that would give us one pallet per game day. Okay, so let's save that value. And let's look at the cell point. So the cell point here, what we're looking for, we're, again, the XML is useless to us. We don't really need this. Um, this particular cell point costs us a dollar, so it's no big deal. Just gonna close that out. There is the uh, bakery cell point dot i3d. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for something called price scales. Price scales equals two. Let's say that we've decided that this uh, particular production sell point pays way, way too much than we want to uh, want to have. Uh, if we put in a one, we're basically going to half the amount of uh, money that we'll earn. But we're going to do something even more drastic. We're going to change this to 0.5. So this sell point is now going to pay us one fourth of what it used to pay us. And then we're going to change this just to something that we understand. Uh, we're going to say, say this is the bread cell point. Just because uh, we can. Again, it's a station name. So here for the cell point, we're only concerned about prices scale or price scales and station name. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And now let's go ahead and jump on in the game. And uh, we'll see what we've got. Okay, guys, we are back, and uh, it's still um, 217. Still have our two pallets over here. 
and we are now producing still and uh, we've got 13 units okay still got our cell point now let's check our cell point here um see here now on the prices screen it is called a bread cell point yippee it's english we understand what that means and it now only gives us 610 dollars per pallet okay so it is now paying us out significantly less and it has been renamed now let's use the manual fast forward mod and we're going to uh, put on our flashlight and we're going to fast forward until 218 uh, tomorrow see we are getting a whole lot less product per hour yeah we're gonna stop just shy of uh, of our goal and let this uh, production mod catch up but we would have had a whole lot of pallets produced in that time frame had we not uh, dialed back production Uh, since we dialed it back, this is going to be producing a lot slower. Let's see, has it caught up to us yet? There, it's caught up. And we're not at a full pallet yet. If we walk up here, we'll see that we are at 92%. So let's speed this up a little bit, and we'll see how fast that ticks up now. We're at 30%, or 30 times clock speed. We're at 20, 37, 27. 3740. Let's go to 60 times speed. 3754. So you see it is ticking up a whole lot slower. Let's let's go ahead and kick up the clock a little bit faster. See now we are at two o'clock. Very close to our uh, our goal here of 2016. Of course we did a little rounding there of the amount per hour but you can see we're basically getting one pallet now per game day as opposed to one pallet per hour and if we go over here our bread is now down to 460 per thousand liters so if we uh, take this and drop it in here we're gonna get uh, four thousand liters in a pallet so this mod was going to pay out royally at $2,000 per thousand and 4,000 liters. So we we're going to get $8,000 per pallet. Uh, now we're still going to get a fair chunk of change. But again, $1,800 for that one. Again, if we only get one pallet per game day and we have such a lower uh, um, price point, uh, it's not going to become the cash cow that this mod used to be. And if that's how you want to play the game, well, you now have the uh, knowledge in order to be able to do that. Uh, if you like to play the game where you just roll in the millions, then you may want to bump the price index up uh, more than it is right now. So when we come back, we're going to look at a uh, M Company script, uh, which is kind of the replacement of the Fabric script. All right, guys, and we are back, and I've got this giant greenhouse uh, this is a pretty cool greenhouse. I got it over at uh, PCSG. And uh, we're producing uh, lettuce, I believe it is. So this greenhouse takes diesel, water, um, seed, and liquid fertilizer. And if you look up here, we got... Uh, there's our output. We're at 83 units. Uh, let's go ahead and speed up time. The way this particular factory works... Oops, wrong button. The way this particular factory works is we get a thousand liters per game hour and uh, we get two thousand liters per um, pallet so we got to go through two game hours to get to a full pallet and that's not too bad a production it's not near as fast as the uh, the uh, bread factory where we had um, you know four thousand liters per game hour and uh, a full pallet every game hour so this is this is a little bit slower than that Let's go ahead and uh, wait until this thing produces another pallet. I've already got one pallet that I have already produced. And uh, basically just seeing how fast this worked. 
are almost done and it is six uh six thirty something is what should uh cause this pallet to uh to go into full production. So let's back it down. Six thirty six ish. This thing should shut off. Hundred percent. And here is our our cell point for those that pallet. We are at a hundred percent. So let's uh, we'll just leave that there because we're going to exit the game. We're not going to save it. We're just going to exit, and uh, we're going to pull up the uh, Notepad plus plus again and take a look. So here we are in Notepad++, and we have our lettuce greenhouse.i3d open. We have the lettuce greenhouse.xml, a palette cell point.i3d, palette cell point.xml, and an m company, company factory .lua script open. We're going to go ahead and take a look. And what we're looking for here is typically we would look for something called product per hour again, if you remember. Let's uh, go ahead and search that. And you'll notice we don't get anything um, for that. We go down here and look at search uh, lettuce. To jump through uh, entries here. All right, so here we are. This is the uh, output. And uh, typically with fabric scripts, we would see a product per hour listing here. And we don't see that 2,000 uh, liters is the capacity of the output node and um, lettuce boxes. So if we go over here to the M company factory script and we look at the product per hour, search product per hour, and basically what we get here, and this is all gibberish to me too, uh, but the important thing is right here, 1,000 units. So what this tells me is if there is no product per hour defined, we make 1,000 units per game hour. That's what we're seeing. Um, but how do we modify this so that we get a better production? So thanks to my buddy Rockhound, who helped me out because he's been doing a lot of work with M company stuff. Uh, he told me that we don't put a product per hour attribute here. Basically, we go up here to the top. Uh, user attribute node, the one where it calls the script on create um, mod on create dot m company factory. This is what's calling the factory script. And we basically need to put in a new attribute variable. This is what we need to put in. We need to put attribute name product per hour type equals float quotes. And value, and then this is the value that we want the uh, factory to now produce per game hour. So if we have it set to 2,000, we will basically double production, and it will produce a pallet per game hour. If we want it to do, again, we want um, one pallet per game day, uh, because we're playing with seasons and we just prefer one pallet per game day. So we do our 2,000 divided by 24, and we get 83.3 repeating. Multiply that just to validate. 83.3. Go in here and let's change this value to. 80. Okay. And the reason we're doing this is, and we're going to save this value. Okay. So again, for M company scripts, if there isn't already defined a product per hour variable, we can add it, but we need to add it up here at the top user attribute node where it calls the M company factory, okay? If it's anywhere else, it won't work. All right, so we save that. Now let's go ahead and um, jump back in game and take a look and see what our production looks like now. All right, so we are back in game and we're back at our greenhouses, our greenhouse. And uh, let's go ahead and speed up time it's 4.36, so let's uh, fly through here until tomorrow. And we'll pause and we'll let this thing catch up. 
bit. Fly up until 4.52. So we should now have a pallet. I kind of flew by our target of, of well, no, it's 2.52, not 4.52. We still have plenty of time. See, when we fast forward like that, we we go time a whole lot faster than the script can keep up. But we are definitely producing much, much less um, per game hour than we were earlier. And again, your uh, values may be different. You may want to speed up production. You may want to slow down production, but you may not want to slow down near as slow as, uh, as that. So 236. And we are at ourselves 2,000 liters. So we now have a full pallet again. So like I said, this is this is fitting your style of gameplay. You may want this to uh, you may want this to produce ridiculously fast and if that's the case then all you're going to be doing is just emptying pallets uh, constantly until the factory runs empty or you may want to slow it down to a level like um, 500 so that it puts out you know, it takes four game hours to outdo a pallet, or uh, you may want to super slow it down so it takes a couple days to fill a pallet. It's whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Let's uh, speed this up. All right. Now we have two pallets, 1,000 liters a piece, and let's look at how we adjust the price again. So if we go to our prices screen, well, I happen to know that Reynolds Wholesale is the sell point name for the greenhouse pallets. Scroll over here, we'll see here are the values. Lettuce, cauliflower, or this is tomatoes, cauliflower, I think this is lettuce here. Okay. So again, these values fluctuate um, up and down. Let's go ahead and save this and uh, we'll exit the game. I will go back into Notepad++ and take a look at the sell point. All right, so here we are in Notepad++ again with our pallet selling point dot i3d. And what we want is, again, down here at the user attributes. This is all the user attributes related to the pallet sell point. Fill types, we've got tomato, we've got all of these um, various fill types. And you'll notice that there are, um, what, six of these? One, two, three, four, six, eight. There are eight of those. Uh, here you can see the name Reynolds Wholesale. So if we wanted to change this name for any reason, we could do that. We could change this to FK Wholesale, FK Produce, Produce Sale, if wanted to. And here are the price scales. So again, just like the other sell point, we have price scales. And we can change these. And you'll notice that there are eight, number eight ones. Okay, so each of these correspond to each of these fill types in order. So lettuce is the third fill type. Um, so we can change this one. So let's let's do this. Let's change this to one. Let's do that one. Let's make this a two. Let's make this a three. Make this a four. Now let's make this a point um, seven five. This is a point five. This is a point two five, and this is back to one okay let's just do that so now we're going to have different price values for each of the uh or different price factors for each of these so in theory um whatever this type whatever this is is in theory always going to be about double the price of tomatoes lettuce will always be about three times the price of tomatoes and um red cabbage will always be about half of what a tomato and a pumpkin is going to cost. Let's go ahead and save that and let's jump back in game. So we are back once again and uh, here we are um, at our sell point and let's go ahead and look at our price scales. So again remember we changed this to FK produce sales so it's now up here. So look see how our prices reflect and wow they are a lot different so we've got uh, eleven hundred dollars for our tomatoes twenty one hundred dollars for our what that is might be cauliflower 
Our lettuce is 1900. It's in the red. Um, so it is not triple our tomatoes. It's still higher and it's in the red. And then, whoa, look at this one, $4,100. And then we go to 937, 280, 287 melons. And our pumpkins are back up to 1500. So you can see how different price indexes really can affect overall price here. Again, these are prices per thousand liters. So even though this is 2000 and, or 1900 and it's in the red per thousand, we're gonna get just under $4,000 per pallet um, for that. And if we produce one pallet per game day, uh, four thousand dollars a day isn't isn't too terrible bad, right? I mean, we don't want this stuff to be like massive cash cows. Drop it in there, and we'll see our money tick up. Of course, if we went out and we modified the price scale and came back in, then our prices would be um, adjusted respectively so there you go guys i hope that helped you uh, now if you want to modify how a placeable um that just gives you money uh can pay out you can do that if you want to modify a fabric script placeable to output either faster or slower or pay out better or low or worse uh you can do that and then if you have an m company uh, placeable that you want to do the same thing to you want to speed up production or slow it down you want to increase or decrease the amount of money you get per pallet you now have the uh, knowledge to do so so again make these edits for your own personal use do not edit these and then upload as a completely new mod or as another product um, this information is provided for the benefit of you the player to uh, make changes to suit your play style and your play needs and uh, not really for distribution because you're not really doing modding you're just tweaking things all of these edits have been done without the editor which is also another great key so until next time guys happy farming